Chapter 4. Is giving masculine or feminine? Like Leslie, many women have been trained in some cases by their feminine fathers who wanted them to be another mommy that giving is a feminine skill and receiving is the right and privilege of the real man. These women feel that they have to get out there and do something in order for a man to love them. It frustrates me when young man com comes to my office complaining. I take her out on one date and she calls me for three. I buy her one dinner and she has me over for four dinners. I send her a card and she sends me a fabulous gift. When his, then his girlfriend comes into my office and says, I treat him so well, so why won't he give me a commitment? In a rational family, a woman is taught to love herself first. If, however, she is raised in a family where her father wanted his feelings to be taken care of and his wife's or his daughter's and did not give back lovingly, she cannot develop self-love. An example of this kind of man would be an alcoholic, a workaholic, a violent or abusive man, or one who expressed high performance expectations of his daughter. Let me make the distinction between the healthy identification of a girl with a father, as with Andrea, and a young woman who is not cherished by her father, but is only validated by him if she performs. This kind of woman will usually be a mother to the men in her life. When they are under the age of five, a healthy mother loves her children better than herself. However, when the children get older, she'd better start switching back to being self-centered. If you look back at your own childhood and your mother was giving, protecting, and cherishing her family, you're seeing someone who forgot to go back to her womanhood after she had her babies. Mothering is a terminal illness when used on able-bodied people over the age of five who can do for themselves. Women who mother their husbands eventually either drive them away or subdue them until they cannot stand alone. Unfortunately, many women never get over an attack of motherhood. One of my male clients told me that his wife changed into a mother when she gave birth and remained primarily a mother. That man lost his woman to his son. That is unhealthy. Any parent who puts the child instead of her own mate is not married in the real sense, in my opinion. That person can be legally bound, but not intimately married. When a woman is selfless with a son over five, she is doing him a great disservice because she will have the impression that all women should be givers. This will cause problems in his relationships with women, and he can easily become the kind of man Dan Kinley talks about in his book, The Peter Pan Syndrome. These are narcissistic little boys who have not grown into healthy manhood. They do not have the ability to love, protect, cherish, give back, or assume responsibility. A Peter Pan type man expects his woman to take better care of him than of herself. He will get her to make the dinner or theater reservations, lend him money, pick him up for a date, pick out his mother's birthday present because he's too busy to do it himself. Unless you want to be his mother, you must learn to say no to these requests. The feminine energy is not giving because giving is action and femininity, whether in woman or man, is passive passivity. For a true balance of energy, women must give back to men who graciously give, protect, and cherish them first. When a man can give, protect, and cherish his woman above himself, he has matured to selflessness and he will be rewarded by those he loves. But if instead of giving, protecting, and cherishing his woman above himself, he says, that's not fair. Why do I have to give first? Why doesn't she give first? My mom gave to my dad and they've been married for 35 years. My answer is your mom was selfless, therefore masculine, and your dad was feminine, a Peter Pan, depending on whether he was able to give back or not. A masculine energy does not marry a woman who gives to him unless he's a little boy who wants to be mothered. A masculine man marries a feminine woman who is available to receive from him, who respects him for giving, and who knows how to give back to reward him, but always a little less than she gets. That might mean cooking a nice meal, occasionally talking, taking him to a movie or theater, or giving him a little gift or card that he might like. The only stipulation is that she not give back more than he has given her, which would put him in the feminine receiver position and perhaps make him feel smothered as well. 
If you are a healthy feminine woman, you are self-centered. You love yourself first before any man. If you are a healthy feminine woman, you are self-centered and you love yourself first before any man. Then you share that love with your man and your loved ones. You say no to people, places, and things that hurt you in any way. You say no to whatever strikes you as unethical. You say no to the man you love. You say, I don't feel good about doing what you ask, and I will not do it without retrib retribution, even if it causes you pain. I would rather cause you pain by saying no than hurt myself by saying yes. Sometimes you might also be able to say, I'm not going to put up with what you do. I'm going to leave you now. When you say no to what you don't want, you are faced with two responses from a man. Either he'll say, you deserve someone better than me. I don't want to, you, I don't want what you need or want. Or he will say, I will find the things you want by experimenting and creating. I will find what turns you on. If you know what you don't want from him, he will figure out what you do want by investing time, money, and energy. It is good for him to solve the problem, and he will feel good about himself when he is appreciated as giving, protective, and cherishing. Masculine men like problems and challenges. They like the chase. Little boys like mama to do it for them. They don't want you to ask them for anything at all. Women who attempt to control seductively by saying yes to everything and suppressing feelings are insecure and inadequate as women. A masculine man is turned off by a yes woman because he knows she is needy, dependent, guilt-inducing, and easily manipulated by any man. He needs to trust your no to believe your yes. He has to be able to trust your virtue after marriage. Men know other men. They know that men go after what they want, the woman, and will get her unless she loves herself better than she loves a man. However, a man must love his woman better than himself, or he will use and abuse her if she allows it. If you can learn to say no, you will have the satisfaction of knowing that you can never be used by a man. A man can propose anything, but you must say yes or no to remain emotionally balanced and in control. So remember, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it, no matter who is demanding. The casting couch, the boardroom couch, the marriage bed, the cash register, the baby basement all invite a confused woman to sell out her total balanced life, which should be designed by herself for herself and no others. If, however, a woman chooses to be the masculine energy to be selfless and love others ahead of herself, she is comfortable doing so, she will thrive. Masculine men like to be needed, but feminine men do not. They are more comfortable with a woman who likes to take responsibility, leaving them to be more artistic fun element in the relationship. Both styles are appropriate for their complementary woman, a masculine energy man with a feminine energy receiving woman, and a feminine energy man with a giving masculine energy woman. One selfless giver and one self-centered receiver make a perfect loop and a fertile Medium for sex and romance. Fran, the manager of a beauty supply house, and Jack, who worked in an art gallery, met at a coffee house, liked each other, and exchanged cards. As often happens, they intuitively sensed each other's sensitivity and found it magnetic. Jack generally felt more comfortable when the woman he was interested in took the risk to signal him that he was wanted. Fran felt the same way about men. Both put a priority on magnetic feminine energy rather than dynamic masculine energy. Before their relationship could move forward, one of them had to decide to be masculine and speak up, asking for a date of some type. In this case, neither of them made the move and the exchange cards only remi remained each of a lost chance. Dottie, a secretary, and Thomas, a police Policemen also failed to have a relationship because both wanted to, both wanted to be in charge. They met for a date in service and had a good time in their first date. Although Thomas made it clear that he liked to be in control of relationship and would be in touch with her, Daddy couldn't wait and called him a few days later. Much to his annoyance, in fact, he asked her not to call again, and he never called her again. Daddy had to learn that she must either find a feminine man who likes being chased or be a feminine woman who will wait to be chased. 
In my seminar, Dottie learned that she really preferred being the more passive feminine energy. At the same seminar, Arnold, as aspiring television writer, decided that he preferred to be the masculine leader with a feminine woman. They met one evening at a social hour I hold after each seminar. Dottie liked Arnold, smiled at him, and waited for him to approach her. He did approach and begin talking, then asked her for a date, which she accepted. When Arnold began courting her by taking her out and buying her presents, Dottie managed always to give back less, which made Arnold feel good. They were opposites in energy and commented each other enough to function without many collisions or power plays. If you are giving masculine energy, women who wants to go feminine, stop giving and sit passively until he gets the message and talks to you about negotiating a more balanced deal. Don't give advice. That is more giving. A few months ago, a woman named June, the beautiful owner of a talent agency, came to my woman's group to deal with her boyfriend of two years, Sam. He insisted she do all the long distance driving from her house to LA to his house on Long Beach, where he constantly invited other people to join them on their dates as a way of blocking intimacy. He refused to consider marriage. June had agreed to his terms, lacking a strong sense of self-esteem. She feared that if she left Sam, no one else would want her. After a few group sessions, however, June decided, although reluctantly, to put her foot down and to stop driving to see Sam. Shakedly, she told him so. He immediately began driving to see her. June found that the less she gave to Sam, the more he gave to her. And as a result, June began to feel more desirable and saw Sam as less so. In fact, she began to see him in a different light. She seemed superficial and shallow, and now because she was more confident and grounded in her self-love, she realized that she was not the kind of he was this was not the kind of man she wanted to invest her life in. She made a very strong decision and broke off the relationship. Now instead of calling Sam, she calls group members when the urge to see him arose and Judy dated to distract herself while waiting for a man who could offer her a better deal. What does all this mean in terms of the stereotypical image of this self-sacrificing woman? It means that image is wrong. This image is exactly the one that the woman's movement is confronting, often to the point of going to the extreme polarity. Sometimes women are advocating not only don't give, but don't even give back or just be yourself. You don't need him and you don't need to compromise for him. But somewhere between demanding individual rights and melding into a relationship lies my premise of giving and giving back. If you choose to be the feminine energy in the relationship, Please take this pledge. I promise never to give anything to a man unless he is under five years of age or sick in bed, unless there's something in it for me first. <laughs>